Hi there everybody. This is our first little tutorial of the year and I'm sorry that I've been a bit delayed getting it up and running. My new computer has slowed me down a bit. Um, we're going to go over chapter 2, section 1, and chapter 2, section 2. I realize this isn't in time for doing your regular homework, but it is in time for doing your corrections for the week. And it will also give your parents an opportunity to see what's going on. Um, in section 1, we had a couple of vocabulary words. Here are the vocabulary words and the examples. You can take a look at them if you need to pause this in order to read through them, that's fine. In section one, we also talked about the order of operations. When we use the order of operations, the first thing we always do is complete problems that are within grouping symbols. Then we move on to multiplying and dividing. Make sure you go from left to right as you do that. And thirdly, we do addition and subtraction, moving from left to right. Again, if you need to pause this to spend a little more time looking at it, that's fine. Here's an example. Using our order of operations, how would we solve this problem? Well, our order of operations first tells us to do things in grouping symbols. We have no grouping symbols, so we have to skip that step. So our next step tells us to multiply and divide from left to right. This section of the problem is multiplication. So we're going to solve that. 3 times 5 is 15. And then we're going to bring the rest of the problem down. If it helps you, you can cross that off so you know you've already done it. To finish solving this problem, we go to the last step in the order of operations, which is addition and subtraction from left to right. We have subtraction, so 25 minus 15 equals 10, and that's your answer. Here's a second example for order of operations. First step is to do things within the grouping symbols. We have a grouping symbol here. 2 plus 4 equals 6. So we complete that first. We drop the rest of the problem down next to it. Second step is to do multiplication and division from left to right. Now we have division and we have multiplication. They're both there, but we have to go from left to right. So first we're going to do the 6 divided by 3. 6 divided by 3 is 2. We drop the rest of the problem down. Now we can do our multiplication. 2 times 2 is 4. That's your answer for the problem. And that's pretty simply what we did in section 1 of the chapter. Um, the only other thing I can think of that you may need to know to work on is if a problem specifically says a product of a power or a power of a product, they want an answer that is with an exponent. I just remembered. That's in the next section. Let's move on to exponents. Sorry about that. Okay. Here's section two. Section two is all about exponents, as I've just stated, a little prematurely. A number with an exponent looks like this. When you're working with exponents, you need to know that the big number is called the base, and the little number is called the exponent. The big number is the number you're going to use to tell the factor that's getting multiplied. The exponent is the number that tells you how many times you should multiply that, that base. So here we go. 5 to the 4th power tells us we're going to use the number 5. And to the 4th power tells us we're going to use it 4 times. So 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 equals 625. Here's where I need to tell you what I was saying earlier. If a problem in your homework tells you that they want the product with an exponent, your answer should look like this, this one that's circled. It should look like the base and the exponent only. You don't need to write out all this other stuff. Okay, also in section two, we had some vocabulary. Squared means a number with an exponent of two, and cubed means a number with an exponent of three. You will have some problems like that. Okay, and then we talked about order of operations again, and we did some, some problems with that. When you're using the order of operations with exponents, you simply slip exponents right here into step number two. Let's go ahead and do an example or two. Let's see here. Three plus five squared divided by seven equals. Okay, we follow our order of operations. The first thing we have to do is look inside of the 
brackets and see what to do first. So the first thing we need to do is inside the brackets. And we have an exponent in there, so we solve that first. 5 squared is 25. So I keep my brackets, bring everything else down. So I'm still working inside the bracket. 3 plus 25 is 28. Bring the rest of the problem down. 28 divided by 7 is 4. That's how we solve that one. Okay, here's another example along the same lines. 6 minus 2, which is inside brackets, and is squared, times 3 plus 4. Okay? First we look inside the brackets. Notice that the exponent's on the outside of the bracket. So we're going to do inside the bracket first. 6 minus 2 is 4. We bring down that squared and bring down the rest of the problem. Now we do our exponent. 4 squared is 16. Bring down the rest of the problem. Give myself a little more room to work here. 16 times 3. 16 times 3 is 48. So we did that part. Bring down the rest of the problem. And then 48 plus 4 is 52. That's your answer. Okay? You know that as you're doing your homework that or your corrections that you can actually punch in the original equation as is and if you do that in your calculator, it'll give you what your answer should be. But I want to be able to see your work, so make sure you show your work.